have Kelly, who's a developer evangelist at Twilio and spends a lot of time thinking about how to make technical concepts accessible to new audiences. Previously, she's worked in a variety of engineering roles in languages ranging from Python all the way to Scala. Her, ta her talk today is on three things, 2FA, OTP, WTF. I'm assuming the last one is also a security term. I'll do it. All right, let's talk about some acronyms. Yes, that's the energy we want. All right, who here considers themselves a security engineer? <laughs> who here works at a website that requires your users to sign up or log in? Congratulations, you are all security engineers. All right, thank you for the introduction. My name is Kelly. I'm going to be talking about two-factor authentication. I think this talk is well-timed because as everybody goes home for the holidays and you get to be tech support for your families, encourage them to use a password manager and turn on 2FA, all right? Okay, important things first. Stock photos of hackers are hilarious. <laughs> this guy has clearly hacked into the computer because it says he did. <laughs> Start by defining acronyms. 2FA is two-factor authentication. This is a security best practice that is generally recommended now. You might know this from the text messages that you get after you log in using a username and password. You'll get a little text on your phone with like a six-digit code that says, hi, use this code, go through another screen, and validate that this is who you are. And that's what all of this is about. Account security is about validating that you are the person offline that you claim to be online. And the factors that we're going to be talking about can be grouped into three buckets. Yeah, this guy's got like money on the keyboard. I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> and so these three types of buckets are something you know, and that's going to be like a password, something you have, that might be your phone, and something that you are, maybe that's a fingerprint or now like face ID with iPhones. And <laughs> what you need to do, yeah, the, the dimensions on this one are just all off. Uh, <laughs> And so one of the things that we do for one of these factors is this idea of OTPs, or one-time passwords. And these are an idea of a, of a security a protocol that you can use. But once we had this idea, then we were like, OK, there are a lot of ways to implement them. And so industry researchers got together and say, let's go ahead and get some things to standardize this. And so we started talking about this in about 2005. And come 2011, we've developed the TOTP, or the time-based one-time password RFC. And so this is a standard. There is an algorithm for this. You might be familiar with this if you've ever used an app like Google Authenticator or Authy, where that code is ticking down. I've sped it up a little bit. But you've got about 30 seconds to enter the code into, the, into your other device. And so this is a way that you can add a little bit of more security to your applications because this is a bit more secure than just sending text messages. And so how does the TOTP algorithm work? This is a bit hard to read, so I'm going to step through it. So you're going to start with a secret key. And this is what happens when you scan that QR code. You're going to get the secret key onto your device so that the server and your device both have that secret key. You're going to be using the current time. And then this is going to be normalized into a time period so that you can use that code for more than just like a microsecond. And then you're going to combine those, put them through a signing function, get a hashed value out. And then once you have that hashed value, you're going to truncate that and turn that into an integer value. So that's usually going to be six or seven digits that then you as the user can type into that uh, app that's asking for it. And how would you do this in Python? Uh, so there's a library for this. It's called PyOTP. And this is a library that was forked from the Ruby version of this. In general, if you are adding security features to your website, don't write them from scratch. Somebody has already done this for you. None of you claim to be security hackers. So <laughs> you want to use somebody else's code that's done this already. And so I think, as you can see, in just about six or eight lines of Python code here, you can use this, out, this library to add TOTPs to your website, which is pretty cool. All right. <laughs> Security is always a challenge, but I want to challenge you as developers to really take ownership of this. Account security and that login process and that user sign-up process is really something that you can add yourself and that you can really own and, and make your apps more secure. Passwords aren't perfect. 2FA isn't perfect. But the whole idea between security is always going to be a trade-off between making your apps more secure and the user experience on the end. If you're securing a Bitcoin app, 
you might want to add a little bit more security. If you're not dealing with money or personal information, then you might not need to add as much security to your post or to your, uh, to your app or website. Uh, I'll post these slides to my Twitter. Uh, come find me if you have any questions about this. Uh, my name's Kelly Robinson. I think security is for everybody, and thank you for listening. <laughs>